Okay, here we are. Back at the back in the saddle again. Welcome to the Backyard Professor videos. I'm the Backyard Professor, of course. You know who I am. <laughs> Don't you? I hope. I I have uh, spent this last week in uh, some extensive reading in um, both evolutionary theory, evolution, the science of evolution, and some religious texts. I have been going over some various authors uh, on this subject of evolution. And why is evolution, why is science in general perceived as the enemy of religion? Now, we have this interesting dichotomy of science versus religion. We also have this interesting dichotomy of evolution versus God. And then what I've written underneath that, what I've written underneath that is, the enemy of religion is thought to be science. That is false. Science is not the enemy of religion. Wrong answer. The theory that evolution shows there is no God, that there's nothing left for God to do, Stephen Hawking made that real famous in some of his works, which I completely disagree with. The idea of evolution versus God is completely false. Scratch that one off also. The enemy of religion is not science. The enemy of religion is ignorance. Can you see that? Ignorance is the enemy of religion. And the enemy of science is not religion. The enemy of science is ignorance. We have a propensity in this country, the United States of America, to believe that the misnomer godless atheism is the thing to fight because it threatens our culture. It threatens our understanding that there is a plan of God, and we are part of that plan. And evolution not being contingent, not having a direction, there is no teleology in evolution. And what that means is evolution does not have a goal. It doesn't have a purpose. It doesn't have meaning. It just is, and it works by natural selection. Through mutations, random mutation, evolution itself is not a random process. It is the mutations that, ri that give rise to variations that is random. They actually, and, and I will get into this. What I want to do with this next series of videos, and I have two approaches I need to do. Now that I've read enough of the literatures, uh, I've read enough of the books on this, that now I understand. I, I have, well, I have several different audiences in my YouTube videos now. Uh, one is the LDS audience, of which I believe in Mormonism, so I'm a Mormon. And we LDS have questions that are in common with Christianity about evolution and about how, the, how does this evolution thing uh, wipe out God and how can we fight this? How can we fight godless evolution when it seems to have all of the evidences? How is religion going to survive? How does our unique view in Mormonism work to refute evolution? The Christians have a different set of issues with evolution, and yet at the same time there is a common bond between Mormon Christians and typical classical Christians. 
we all bandy together to fight this godless evil, this amoral, immoral, non-teleological evil science. Because it's producing atheists, and they are destroying the meaning of our lives. This whole approach is all wrong. Time out. Time out. This whole approach is wrong. What I'm going to do first is I want to share, and it's extensive. There's a lot of literature on this. A lot of very good ideas on this that I really do want to share. Because we have questions about Adam and Eve being the first humans. We have this idea that there was no death before Adam and Eve. And yet science clearly shows, absolutely without question, that there was life and death going on for hundreds of millions of years before even hominids showed up in the fossil record. So how do we reconcile these contradictions? We are made after the image of God, according to Genesis 1, 26 and 27. How do we reconcile that with Darwin's astonishing magnum opus, The Descent of Man, where he shows that mankind is also directly related to the animals? Genetically, we are related to all life also, because we come from this earth. Darwin demonstrated that very powerfully in his book, The Descent of Man. The Origin of Species was a little bit different tack, where he discussed that all of the animals are related through earlier species, through earlier progenitors. So what I want to do is I want to share some ideas on the with my Mormon audience, and the rest of you, of course, can watch these because you might learn something too. I want to share some very interesting interpretations with some unique LDS scriptures with the Mormons that I'm quite sure you haven't entertained before. And then I want to bring out this information from the Christian side also, because there are some unique things that you haven't heard before. Now to assure those who are diehard evolutionists, I want you to know something. So am I. I have great news for you. I'm not going to disparage evolution. I'm going to completely support and give evolution its due. Because we are living in the midst of a factual, natural world, folks. Evolution is powerfully confirmed. Evolution is not the enemy of our religions. Sometimes the way it's expounded by scientists, as well as by some of the religious folk, make it appear as if evolution is the enemy. No, what I want to try to accomplish in this series of videos, I certainly won't please everyone with them. I really don't care. We can obviously talk about it, of course is I need to switch your paradigm so that you understand that the enemy of our religions are our incorrect assumptions based in ignorance about how the situation with evolution and religion occur. They are not opposites, and they are not at loggerheads battling each other. Oh, I know, there's many people who want us to believe that, but I don't. I am an intellectually fulfilled Mormon. Just as sure as Dawkins, Richard Dawkins, is an intellectually fulfilled atheist, but Dawkins and atheists in general have some assumptions that have been called into question, and I want to bring those out. Evolution does not necessarily lead to atheism. Evolution, if we understand the proper relationship with science and religion, can enhance a believer's understanding in the utter grandeur 
of God's creation. And we 